okay. And you just remove the cartridges like so. Yo, today I'm back in Chiswick Park, uh, finishing off that board that I started the other week. So gonna run through how I do all of that, show you putting all the circuits away, the board chart, the kit, everything. And yeah, I've got a bit of OCD when it comes to boards as well. So I don't know how much I'm gonna get done today because I'm gonna be messing around, making sure I try to get as neat as possible and um, yeah, make sure that I'm happy with it. This is the board. So if you remember me and Gary done a early morning changeover, he's uh, done a bit of extra work since. He's got the area controller mounted, extra bit of tray that he's cutting down there, all of these in and stripped. And then yeah, the board's there. So I'm gonna get the cover off, uh, start running through these. He's also done me massive board chart that I can, uh, I can use to work to. We've got some emergency lighting circuits as well. These are actually done off of the existing circuits. So I've got old references on here, new references on there. So I've got to try and make that work obviously got some bits and bobs live as well but yeah let's get the cover off and uh, start taking a look oh, sweet here we go here we go right let's get you off here and uh, yeah that's the inside of the board so Gary's already put some circuits away up here get some temps on obviously leads are just sort of put away like that for now but yeah that's what we're going to be going for nice and neat like that everything just swooping in and again these are just the site temps so they can just do whatever this is for the metering um, and what I'll probably do is I'll bump these up put a breaker here for the SPD which will get mounted in the trunk and below Obviously got all of our metering and stuff, everything that I ran through in the last video. He's uh, started doing these tie wraps as well, so again, I can get that to focus in there. Nothing's, uh, nothing's obviously permanent, I'm going to tidy all that up later, but that's the sort of the vibe we're going for with that. I'm just going to have three rows, keeping everything nice and neat, nice and tidy. I'm going to start, I think, on the right-hand side. I'm still waiting for some breakers to turn up for the left-hand side, so I'll start on the right-hand side, get as much of that put away, and then hopefully the breakers turn up, I can do the left-hand side. He stripped all the armors for me as well. Legend. We've got a sleeve in. We've got all of our breakers here. Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, Type 2 SPD. I think I've also got a Schneider one somewhere as well. Should do. Um, and then yeah, all our CBOs and everything like that. So plenty to crack on with, yokes, key switches, a few glam packs. So everything, everything we need to crack on. It's also done this for me, look. That makes it so much easier. Banging tip there. If you number that up, you can just work away nicely. We've kept it left and right. I know some people like to alternate and do whatever. I prefer this way, but I am happy to admit that it makes more sense alternating just a nightmare to be honest especially when you've got old circuitry that you're trying to make work with what you've got already let's get this uh this camera locked off on the tripod and um yeah i'll start start getting the breakers in i think get our 40 amp breaker fitted and surge protection is going on 21 l1 there we go Clipped in, locked in, happy days. So we've got some 16 mil tails that I'm literally gonna run at the bottom of the board around to the SPD. Got to mount the enclosure as well. So we're actually, we'll probably just smash that out first because that's gonna uh, be like a bit of a separate thing compared to the rest of the board. Yeah, 16 mil tails running out. I'm gonna put on a 40 amp breaker. The breaker is just to protect the cables basically, like it's a circuit. Got a 63 amp and a 40, I'm just gonna use 40 because 60 mil, that's fine. And then, yeah, I'll run you through this SPD as well. Schneider ones are pretty smart and they come all stickered up, really informative and stuff. A lot of the SPDs come with like no information, <laughs> no instruction or anything. The Schneider ones do and it's, uh, it's quite informative. So I'll run through that. It's gonna be hard to keep this all under one meter if I go on the bottom anyway. <laughs> Have a look. It's going to be tricky. Um, what I might do is I might actually mount it on the side up here and then um, 
it's not too far from the earth bar, it's not too far from the neutral bar, and this is not far at all from the, from the breaker. I think that might be the shout. Um, just got to have a look at the enclosure. <laughs> I knew it would be. We've got one of these ones where the, uh, the sides come off, the sides are part of the lid. So I won't be able to do side mounted. Maybe I do just put it below then. So the biggest tip I can give with doing that, with drilling out a knockout that's already there, is aim for the centre and just go really, really slow. If you set it to like minimum speed, don't push too hard. It takes a little bit longer, but um, yeah, you can easily get through it without popping the knockout. Obviously, if you do pop the knockout, there's cone cutters, there's the block of wood trick, there's ways to do it. But um, yeah, it makes your life so much easier if you just go slow and easy and uh, yeah, drill it out to the right size. That's a 32 mil hole, 25 mil knockout was there. It's a 32 mil hole. I'm gonna get the bushing coupler mounted, line it up, drill a hole in the trunk in, and then we can start wiring the SPD and then finally cracking on. So a little tip there, um, this hole here obviously hit a stone. I mean, I love this drill to bits, but it's not exactly the, uh, the strongest drill in the world, to be honest. It's great for like fixings like this, but this is super hard concrete as well. Um, but the other two holes are fine, but this one, I must have hit a stone or something. Great way to do that without having to move your hole, and obviously I've only got the three fixings here anyway, is if you keep the same hole, but drill downwards or upwards, you'll still be able to get the fixing in just at an angle. It's not great, but obviously I'd have to move all three of them. And obviously, you know, in hindsight, I could have drilled the hole after in the trunk in, but I can't now, so I have to keep it there. So if you're ever in that situation, keep the same hole, just drill it at an angle, and I've missed the stone or the bit of rebar or whatever I was hitting, and I've still managed to get a fix in. So yeah, simple little tip there. Either that or get, get a better drill. I've got some of the Milwaukee bits that go through rebar, to be fair, but that isn't one of them. You can see um, it's actually really blunted the end of it. <laughs> good from here anyway yeah right I want to get this neutral bar cover off so this is actually going to go into 62 so this breakaway is uh, 61 62 63 so I'm gonna go in 62 because it's in the center it's just the way I like to do it some people like to get the first one etc don't really matter I'm gonna do slightly less than 10 mil that I've been doing because it's going in the bar screwdriver mic is on the floor and we are in one two three four five up from the bottom into the corner, keep it nice and straight, nice and parallel. And then I'm, uh, I'm gonna put a few tie rats around these as well, just to keep them, keep them sweet. I sort of run out of the way of everything else. I'd again, keep stuff center in that, but this is a bigger cable, bigger circuit. So keep it separate from the, the bundles of everything else that we're gonna have going on. And finally, this earth. So this wants to go all the way to the top. And again, this wants to go into, what was it again? 62, no. Yeah, 62. Uh. So 
I've just preformed this. I'm not sure how I'm actually going to go in, but sometimes getting your bends out the way beforehand will uh, will help you out. To be honest, I don't think that's enough. <laughs> what I might have to do is what I said before. Right, so this is my SPD. What I want to do is actually pull these forward and get these centered. The earth is going to be super tight. I'm going to, I'm going to work that one in a bit. But what I want to do is I want to get these positioned roughly where I'm going to want them properly. And then I'm going to trim them all down, cut them all to length, strip them all. And then because I don't want to move any of my lovely tying in that I've done, um, yeah, I'll I'll, trip, I'll cut them all here, strip them all here, take the SPD out and actually slide the SPD onto the cables and then that's how I'm going to get around that. The earth I can just wrap around and tuck into that bottom terminal there anyway. So that's sweet. Yeah, that is the Schneider SPD Type 1 and 2. These go red when it needs replacing. And if you want to remove the cartridges, it's hard to do with your fingers. You want to get a screwdriver in the top and pull them out. What a lot of people, uh, well, not a lot of people, but what I've noticed some sparks don't know is if you're trying to do a dielectric test or, I mean, they're different. Uh, dielectric test isn't quite the same as a insulation resistance test, but they are essentially the same. If you're trying to do an insulation resistance or a dielectric test on the whole board, you want to either turn that circuit off or remove these. Obviously, the neutral will still be connected because it's not a switch neutral on that breaker, so you will at least want to remove the neutral. Um, but if you remove them all, that will stop you getting any funny readings. Some testers it doesn't affect, but I had a fluke tester, and yeah, when the SPD boards come out, I can get ZSs or do insulation resistance tests because of these um, so yeah that's interesting I don't know enough about why that is but it's good to know um, and maybe in a bit I'll show you it's basically that little tabs at the top you want to push them in there that tiny little vertical bit you want to push that in the screwdriver and then they pull out what's cool about the Schneider products as well is they come with like these QR codes on that you can scan to get information about them again it's got like, stickers on the back it comes with like all the required labeling that's the instructions for it so yeah loads of information there's like other brands they literally come with nothing no labeling nothing written on them um, so yeah it's a uh, it's a proper bit of kit to be fair it's impressive Right, so I actually just filmed putting um, all them away but I didn't well I didn't film because I didn't hit record so Sorry about that, it's going to be a little bit of that today. I haven't got Jude, I'm a little bit rusty. In here, we have everything put away. So the way I managed to get all of that put away like that and keep it all tied in really neatly was by basically laying the cables across the front. I think I said in the previous clip, laying them across the front and then just slowly chopping bit by bit off of them until, um, yeah, they fitted and then I basically grabbed the SPD and like tucked it in and onto it. Now I just got to get the earth in. It's going to be super tight, but I think it's literally just going to make it if I don't take anything off of it. Right, I'm not actually 100% happy with that, but 
you win some and lose some in this game. There we go. And you just remove the cartridges like so. When they're spent, that will be red. Red obviously says replace. Um, and then you, know, you just pop them in. But also if you want to yeah, not have your insulation resistance or dielectric tests affected, you can just remove them. Move them like so too. There we go. So now with these enclosures, it's always good to make sure everything sits how you want it to, which it does. So yeah, I can get that screwed up. Before I do that though, I want to get these all to the right torque rating. So should tell me somewhere. Should tell me somewhere. I want to set it to 3.5. Well, I actually already uh, forgot to loosen this, but you actually want to uncoil these as well. I think I've said it before. Just uncoil them when you're not using them, and that will stop the, the spring from going sooner than it should. Obviously, you've got to get them calibrated anyway, so it's not too much drama, but it's good to know. Let's pop that in there. Cool. I'll just spin these back half a turn. Bush, and then go one by one. There we go. There we go. Three point five is a decent amount of torque for those terminals. Fair play. And then we can get this on. We've got a wonky wall. It's monkey, but I mounted the thing straight. What can you do? What can you do? It's currently 10 past 10, 11 past 10. My Unilight is still going in the next demise. Still ticking away, look. How long do you reckon it's got? It's been on probably for an hour. I'll give it till, till about one o'clock, but we'll see. Be fair, but I can go get it by then. It's time. Let's go. Pad up top, but that's that SPD done. 